Jordan Run is on, gentlemen. We have long dove into his evolution as a player. Dan, I'm so curious if four years ago when he was moving all around the diamond, if you saw this, did you? Personally, I did. I mean, I'm not trying to say that after the fact. I just feel like the Braves, what separates them like the Dodgers, they draft and develop so exceptionally well, and then they take a good player and turn him into a great player at the big league level, which is what they've done with Austin Riley. That's what separates all these teams. And this I, time I of year that. is when you've got, it's the holy grail of the game, is talent evaluation. Lauren, I echo that because coming up in the Atlanta Braves organization, I know pieces have turned over, but the bottom line, it was about development. There is a race to get these young guys to the big leagues, and some of them are not fundamentally ready to he play was. at the big league level. The Braves left, leave no stone unturned, and I'm sure there's other organizations. But can I just read this? Because we were talking about Austin Riley being an MVP last year. Yeah. And he hit 303 with 33 and 107 with an 898 OPS. <laughs> right now, right now, he's got 29 bombs, Ooh. 68 RBIs, and a 964, and he's been their most clutch player. And no one talks about his defense at all either. I mean, his defense to me now is one of the better defensive third basemen in our game. And he's durable. Like he shows up. He made 160 post every last day. year. Yeah. And a gem of a human a being. A gem exactly. of a human being. Very nice kid. If they're not ready, why are they rushing him to the big leagues? I don't understand that long term. What's the upside? No, Lauren, I think we dream on players a lot of what we think them to become. And I think at times we inhibit what we, they can become because we do rush them. It's our game anymore. It's our society. We live in a microwave society. We want it. We want it and we want it's it now. Truth. That is the truth. Toronto Blue Jays are 11 and 3 under interim skipper John Schneider. Matt Chapman went deep. Uh, they beat the Detroit Tigers. Uh, where are you on the Blue Jays right now, Dero? They're I'm, loaded with talent. I'm high on the Blue Jays because I think if Barrios is going to pitch the way he's pitched recently, he and fantastic. Matt Chapman's going to show up and be a home run sensation as well, you go into the postseason with almost no weaknesses. I, I mean, obviously, you'd like to shore up the bullpen. I'm sure every team. But there has been an energy change with John Schneider taking over. These guys have played for him in the, in the past. And they seem to be performing. But the bottom line is, as you go in to a postseason series, if and when you get in, with Gosman, Manoa, and, and Barrios. I remember we talked about Barrios is right where he needs to be in that three, three spot. Not take, he not can pitch to a one, pressure, yeah. but I think he fits that profile. Yeah, of the teams, perfect. like they're the best of the next team down in the America. You got the Yankees, you got the, the, the Astros. Astros, and then they're probably the next team down. But I'd rather go into the postseason with Toronto starting rotation yeah. than the Yankees. What do they need to add real quick, Dan? Blue for me, they still need to add one more starting pitcher uh, okay. for depth, and they need to shore up the back end of their bullpen with a bridge guy. Okay. And so many stars will change uniforms. Will J.D. Martinez be one of them? He was asked about the potential of changing teams at this year's trade deadline tomorrow, and this is what he had to say. Listen. I don't know. I'm just worried about, you know, who we're going to be facing in Houston and getting ready for that series, honestly. Um, everything else I'll leave up to Heim and leave up to the front office guys. I can't control it. or There's no point in worrying about it. Uh, I appreciate everything. I appreciate, you know, the love. Um, just the constant energy every time you come in here. Um, you know, it's something I'll, if I do get traded, it's something I'm definitely going to miss and I admire it. You know, these fans are as hard on me as I am on myself and, you know, I appreciate everything. I keep seeing scouts watching J.D. Martinez. What are you watching? I mean, yeah. What, what is that? I think when you get to 35 years old, maybe you're looking for decline in pitch recognition. You know, does he cheat too much to get to pitches? Ah, you're probably over-evaluating. Okay. I'll tell you, the Red Sox, for me, are a really interesting team. They're one of those bubble teams. Uh, Heim's got to really be careful to continually trade big league players like Hunter Renfro yeah. for minor league players that are solid value players, but really probably not nothing more than contributors and certainly not impact players. At some point in time, you got to look at yourself and say, God, I shouldn't trade D.A.D. Martinez unless I get back something of impact. It is the Red Sox. They're not cutting payroll. Right. I think for me, I just want to give love to J.D. Martinez because we talk about Max Scherzer and you always said he's worth every penny. Ev of every Five contract. years, 110 million for the Red Sox worth a every bargain. penny. 2018. Win the World Series, 43 bombs and 130 ribbies, and backed it up with 36 and a buck 05 in 2019. So the Red Sox. Yeah, that and all the intangibles JD. he brings yep. from, a, from a teaching standpoint to the other younger hitters on, in that lineup throughout the years. Red Sox begin a series in Houston tonight.
Meantime, the Astros finishing up business over the weekend with the Seattle Mariners, and there were some interesting moments between these two. This was on Saturday. Yeah, but he swung. Yeah, Julio Rodriguez swings at that Rafael Montero pitch and ends up getting hit on the hand, placed on the injured That's list. Uh, first pitch, uh, George Kirby uh, goes up and in on Jose Altuve so it's just to open the game. That was no, the very first pitch of the game. There's d -Row, there's no place in the game for me than, for that. I mean, I, I get it. If you're gonna hit people, let's figure out how to do this. That's crazy right there. 15 to seven, right? That's what I'm reading on Twitter. 15 Mariners hitters have been hit by Houston pitchers and seven on the flip side to this. Yeah. Julio Rodriguez swung at that pitch. Yeah. I mean, he was pot committed. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah, there's no, for me, there's no place in the game for, I, I, just, I just. I got no problem. It happened. With guys I got it. taking that control wasn't the right of the game. Situation. It We're not learn to do it from the waist down a little bit here. You have to be in the. You have to totally be in, in the clubhouse to understand whether or not that was on purpose. It certainly looked that way, or why, or what the impact was. Yeah. Well, the impact was it cost them two runs in a game that they lost Double by stop. one. Yeah. So. How many times? Do you I still think there's that? time and place where a guy's got to wear one. I do. Oh, yeah. no, no disagreement there. It's just the guy's got to start learning. That how to just do it wasn't that. it. Yeah. All right.